From the Storm Team 8 Tracking Center, this is an update on the Christmas Week Blizzard. Right now in six, blizzard conditions take hold across West Michigan for the first time in a decade. What we've seen so far and how long they're expected to last. Plus, danger on the roads. The state activates the Emergency Operations Center as whiteout conditions lead to dozens of crashes across the area. And no more flights out tonight. What we are hearing from passengers as cancellations continue to force passengers to change their holiday travel plans. This wedding is not getting postponed. This is my Super Bowl. Everybody's showing up. And toughing it out, a West Michigan couple decides a blizzard won't stop their big day. Why they decided to say, I do, despite the weather. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight as our team continues to track this Christmas week blizzard. We want to start our team coverage tonight with Storm Team 8. Chief Meteorologist Ellen Baca is here now with what we are seeing right now and what we can expect the rest of the night, Ellen. Yeah, still many hours to go with the blizzard warning. And for those of you wondering how this storm is stacked up, it officially will go down in the books as a bona fide blizzard. It's not just Grand Rapids that's seen blizzard conditions. We have official blizzard observations that have been met at the five major cities within the viewing area that had blizzard warnings issued for it. If you're in a winter storm warning, a lot of times those visibility numbers have been just above about a quarter of a mile, but still not great. So for blizzard conditions, you have to have visibility of a quarter of a mile or less for three hours and winds at least 35 miles per hour, if not stronger. So again, with that criteria needing to be met for about three hours, some stations like Muskegon saw blizzard conditions since 3.30 this morning steadily. So it hasn't been great outside, and it really is worse near the lakeshore. You can see that as we compare some of these camera views. Muskegon blowing snow, 8 degrees. Allendale, 6. Grand Rapids, 5 degrees. This is the coldest afternoon that we've seen in about four years here. So that's some perspective for you. The last time we were this chill, was the polar vortex. Looking at visibility, we are starting to see some slight improvement. South Haven, Holland, Grand Rapids now up to about a half a mile. But if you're driving by a place that's open where you don't have like a tree uh, stop for the blowing wind, it really just drops to zero very quickly. And now that the sun is down too, that is an acted, added factor. Our snow bands are not letting up at all. They're still just as potent and as robust as earlier, stretching through Douglas, over through Hopkins and Wayland, Caledonia, Irving, Orangeville. South Haven seeing some lighter snow totals at this point in time, but everyone's dealing with the gusty winds. In fact, some of the wind gusts are still sitting there in the 40 mile per hour range. Wind chill, Sturgis, cold water, almost 30 below. Matt, I think the big question is, okay, so is the worst over? Uh, not quite yet. I think yeah. we still have to make it through Saturday. We know that's going to be another challenging day, and I got to begin with this camera view. This just gives you an idea how nasty it is outside. This is a Heritage Point in Muskegon. You can see the camera shaking out there and just one wall of snow after another kind of peeling off of Lake Michigan. And actually, that's Muskegon Lake, just, just not very pleasant. And it's not going to remain pleasant right on through Saturday as we maintain this, these strong winds. OK, future cast will begin at 9 a.m. on Saturday morning. Notice again on this side of the lake, we have the snow showers continuing. Now, areas I would say along M20 towards Saginaw, not quite as bad, but the snow showers will still continue progressing a good distance to the east. And I think, again, there's going to be a pretty good band, I think, sending up between Grand Rapids and around Kalamazoo or in between uh, for tomorrow. Finally, by Sunday, Christmas Day, we're going to start to see the snow showers really start to relax quite a bit. So that means uh, the driving conditions will improve. They're still not going to be fantastic, but much better than today and also tomorrow. Okay, the wind future cast, one of the reasons why I think tomorrow is still not going to be great, we're still going to have to deal with some wind gusts over 40 miles an hour, and then they'll relax quite a bit as we head into the Sunday time frame, probably between 20 and 25 miles an hour for those wind gusts. So Christmas Eve, still not very pleasant. Wind chill temperatures at least around 10 below, not quite as bad in terms of the wind chill on Christmas Day, temperature of 18 degrees. And to say that's an improvement, 18 degrees, good grief. And uh, I think, yeah, Tom Hillen, <laughs> I think he's going to push for management to start doing traffic at home with that scene. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's definitely cozy in here, Matt, that's for sure. Uh, not necessarily cozy out there across area roadways where we are still seeing some of those freeway closures. So uh, as conditions continue to just be bad, out there, uh, the roads continue to be closed. So we have this in the southern viewing area, Berrien County closure of 
northbound US 31 at Napier Avenue. And we're going to travel to the Holland area, which M40 has been a problem pretty much all day long. Closure in both directions between 135th Avenue and I-196. To the east of that, we travel to the 131 corridor, where we're still working with the closure of northbound US 131 at 135th Avenue. I'm not sure that there's been a freeway system throughout West Michigan that hasn't been shut down at some point today. Here's a live look over the Ford Freeway and the US 131 interchange. You can see very light traffic, which is exactly what we want to be seen. And here's kind of uh, what we think the roads will be like for the weekend. Hazardous today, hazardous tomorrow, a slight improvement for Sunday. So rule of thumb here is if you absolutely have to travel, make sure you're leaving early and leaving plenty of distance between you and other drivers. Michelle? All right, thanks, Tom. Thanks for all your hard work today. Really appreciate it. Relax in that perfect little setting. All right, as the snow continues to fall across West Michigan, we want to take a look at just how much we've added. It's actually hard to tell because of all the wind. Meteorologist Blake Harms is live with those details for us tonight. Blake? Yeah, Michelle, want to make a few notes. First of all, we're hearing lots of sirens behind us uh, really all evening long. Conditions seem to be deteriorating here in Grand Rapids, and the snowflakes are getting bigger. They've been fine throughout much of the day, which has helped to limit accumulations. As you can see, though, some bigger snowflakes are flying, and that may help accumulations. It's hard to measure the snow, mostly because of the drifting. Oh, it's got a face full of snow. It is horrible out here. Uh, you know, we're looking at somewhere around a foot, but this includes some of the snow we already had. Take a look at some of the totals we've gotten so far. Generally, the heaviest amounts are between 8 and 10 inches, and that's along the lake shore. Uh, why would not be surprised if some locations are now closing in on a foot with some of these heavier snowfall rates? And uh, the forecast seems to be on track. Again, generally 6 to 12 inches west of US 131, a bit less off to the east. If you do have snowfall reports, send them to us at weatherwoodtv.com. You can do that by taking multiple measurements across the driveway uh, and taking an average of them in snow drift. So that's something that uh, it, it's not necessarily going to be easy, but it helps give us an idea of how much snow we're seeing. And again, as I mentioned, it's picking up here in the Heritage Hill neighborhood. The snowflakes are getting larger. The Grand Rapids Airport has seen 8.6 inches since it started yesterday, with a lot more to go over the next 36 hours. In the meantime, I'm going to head back inside because it is horrible out here, guys. All right, we'll see you inside in just a minute. Thank you, Blake. Well, we've had crews spread out across West Michigan today, keeping an eye on the roads and talking to people who are trying to keep them clear. We have News 8's Amy Fox live in Portage. We want to start though with target aid investigator Ken Kolker who spent some time with snowplow drivers in Kent County today Ken yeah, the Kent County Road Commission called out its entire fleet today and that'll continue for several days as they try to keep ahead of these worsening conditions okay let's just get this question out of the way first just curious how many mailboxes have you taken down in your career I'm not comfortable answering that. <laughs> <laughs> There's been a few. Yeah, okay. There's Just curious. Not, other, not one on purpose, though. Brent Houtman is in his ninth year as a plow driver. You got started at 6 this morning. Yep, 6 o'clock till 6 o'clock. So for his first blizzard. So just coming out to the intersection here and throwing a little bit of material down. Just so you guys have something to stop on. Okay. So what are you putting down? It's just 50-50, 50% 50, 50, 50 sand, 50% salt. Okay. How's that salt going to work? That salt doesn't work right now. This is yeah. just traction. And so goes the first day in what is expected to be a long stretch for snowplow drivers. Sure. What we told them is plan on probably four days in a row. If we can get you out early on Christmas to spend some time with your family, we will. But the forecast doesn't look favorable to that. So it's probably 12 on, 12 off for four or five days. That means overtime for Houtman and other drivers. Overtime? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's a good thing, right? Yeah, that charge card bill will be paid right off after right. this Christmas holiday, right? Yeah, nice. <laughs> but it also means a late Christmas for Houtman's family. My children and my wife are very understanding on this, so yeah. they they know this is part of the job, and you know, it's just part of it. Storms like this present special challenges. Oh, the wind and the cold temperatures, yeah, the tires get warmed up, and then that packs that snow on. And it is, uh, it just turns to straight, straight ice, and that salt does nothing when you put it down there. So, a little bit of sand here and there. He blasts through a drift that he knows will soon regenerate in the wind. We did not do this now. I mean, these these roads would be so drifted, and it'd be it'd be hard for us to get the uh, to clean it up for Saturday, Sunday, Monday when, uh, when people are going to be going over to their family's house. 
Now, plow drivers say it's especially important in conditions like this to stay, be aware of their 55,000 pound vehicles and steer clear from them. Live in Grand Rapids, Ken Colker, News 8. Back to you, Michelle. All right, Ken, thank you for that. Now let's send things to News 8's Amy Fox, who is in Portage for us tonight. Amy, really picking up there, it looks like. It definitely is, Michelle. In the southwest part of the state, especially the I-94 corridor, has been hit hard by this blizzard. In fact, Michigan State Police just recently reopened a section of 94 in Berrien County after there was a crash involving several semis there earlier today. Now, our video journalist Nick Ponton was able to take a ride with the city of Kalamazoo plow trucks earlier this afternoon, and that driver agreed that it is not the amount of snow that's causing problems with this storm it is the wind the wind has been gusting up to 55 miles per hour and when that wind picks up that light snow it can make it very difficult to see now the cold temperatures are also causing problems it is so cold too cold for salt to work melting the snow so here they're putting down a mixture of salt and sand to provide some grip on the roadways now, plow drivers and emergency management officials both say they are thankful that many people have heeded warnings and are not driving around, are not out on the roads today and tonight, and they really are encouraging you to continue to be cautious and only go out if absolutely needed. Live in Kalamazoo County, Amy Fox, News 8. Yeah, that is good news. Amy, thank you for that.